write the following as mixed numerals. Well, the first thing that you've got, 10 over 4, okay? Now, this is an improper fraction. Why is it improper? Because the higher number is improper. Yeah, okay. So, this number at the top and this number on the bottom, right? Usually, you've got the small one here and the big one here. What are they called, by the way? Rather than calling them one on the top, one on the bottom. Okay, yeah. This one's the numerator. And the other one's the denominator. Yeah. Is it 2 and then 1 of 5? Okay, well, let's try it out. Let's see what happens, right? Now, the first thing you want to do before I do any conversion, and we'll see if Shapiro got the right oh, answer. No, I'm wrong. You sure? Yeah. Well, let's find out. The first thing you want to do is what we did over here, which is simplify, right? I can reduce this down. What's the highest common factor? 2. It's 2, isn't it? So that gives me 5 over 2. Okay? Now think with me carefully. This bit's tricky, okay? You need to work out, well, how many times does the denominator go into twice. the numerator? And the answer is twice. You can't go three times because you'd need six and we don't have six, right? So we can go twice, right? Now, here's the way that I would write this. I'm going to write this as four plus one over two. See what I've done? I got the four from, you said it was twice, right? Twice times two. 4 plus 1, right? no problem. Now, because I've broken it up like that, I can write this as two separate fractions, right? 4 over 2 and 1 over 2. See that? Okay. And 4 over 2, you can simplify, you can reduce. What's the highest common factor? It's 2. This becomes just 2 plus a half. There you go. Okay. All right, let's try a harder one. Let's see. Um, yeah, we can do B. B is still harder. Okay, so what we've got here is 28 over 10. So like I said, the very first step is simplify. Don't do anything before you simplify because, um, you know, once you simplify, the numbers are all nice and small. Much easier to work with. So what's my highest common factor? Two. It's two, right? So what am I going to get? Kaki, tell me. When I cancel out, reduce it, what would you get? Um... I wasn't listening because I was doing um, question one. Okay, Jared, can you help him out? 14. Yeah. 14 for 28 and then yeah. um, 5. Good. Oh, thanks. Perfect. Well done. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to ask how many times is 5 go into 14? And again, <laughs> like was, it goes twice again, right? So if it's twice, right, it should be 10 plus 4. Stop and think, where did I get the 10 from? Where did I get the 10 from? It's because you told me twice. So that's two fives, isn't it? Okay. Do you want me to slow down? Where did the number come from? Well, I broke it up into 10 and 4 because you told me that 5 goes into 14 twice. Right? So I pulled out those two fives, right? Yeah. Ten. Alright, so now I'll break it apart. There's one of the fractions and there's the other one. Okay, and ten over five is two. So you're gonna get two and four fits. Okay, now this is tricky. Let's do it one more time. This time you you guys walk me through. Uh, let's see. I have been walking you through. Let's do um you wanna do I? 33 over 5. God okay. Damn. Now, you guys don't need to simplify here, do you? Because what's the highest common factor between 33 and 5? You can't divide. Yeah, it's, it's just 1. So, therefore, I can skip next to this next, immediately to this next step. Right? So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think how many times does 5 go to 33? And the answer is 6 times, right? So, I'm going to take those 6 5s out. That's 30. Plus three. Is that okay? See what I've done? Right. So now I've got the 30 over 5 here, the 3 over 5 there. 30 divided by 5, just like you told me, is 6. There you go. Okay. Now, can I just um, give you a bit of a caution? Okay, give you a caution. See what I've done here in, in breaking apart the numerator. Okay? You can only break apart the numerator. You can't break apart the denominator. Let me show you, right? Let's give an example. Um, let's say a quarter, okay? Let's have a look at what would happen. I can say that's 1 over 2 plus 2. So you're like, cool, I can break this apart just like we've broken apart so far. So that's like 1 over 2 
plus 1 over 2, right? What's a half plus a half? One. It's 1. Whoa, cool. I just had Whoa. money for Whoa. free, right? Whoa. Yeah, okay, so what's my point? It's, it's not money for free. It's not true. The quote is not 1 because you can't break apart the denominator, right? None of these actually are true, right? So numerators, you can, you can break them up. Denominators, not so much. So there you go, that's how to convert from, what was this? An improper fraction to a mixed fraction, right? Okay. Now, do you reckon you could have a go at doing um, the other way? Let's have a look at question five. Pick a question. No, G. G? Five G. That's J. Go straight for the throat. Two and three fifths. Okay. So this thing's already a mixed fraction, right? I'll go the other way. Yeah. Do you mean boys mixed numeral? Yeah, mixed fraction, mixed numeral, same thing, different names. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, cool. Okay, so this thing's a mixed numeral, mixed fraction, right? So I want to turn it into, well, yes, but how do I get there is the question, right? So how do I change it? I'm going to do exactly what I did here, but in yeah, reverse, yeah. right? Because it's the opposite thing. So if I wrote 2, right? This is 2 plus 3 fifths, okay? I want to write this as a fraction with a denominator of 5. Oh, then right? you gotta, uh, so how would I write 2 as a fraction with a denominator of 5? Well, it's, it's 10 over 5, isn't it? 2 times 5. And 10 over 5. Yeah, so I multiplied by 5, top and bottom. Okay. Right, so therefore, and I add 3 over 5 over here, I've got 10 and 3, and that's just 13. Wait, so, yep. second line, where did the 10 come from again? Yeah, good question. Right, let me, um, uh, maybe I should put an extra line in here, because that is, that is the question to ask. In here, right, the, the dilemma I had was I had 2 and I had 3 fifths, and I need to mix them together somehow, right? So what I did was I, I put them, I made them talk the same language, which is the denominator 5. So here's the way I did it. I multiplied it by 5 over 5, which doesn't change the number. That's just 1, yeah? Multiple 2 times 1 doesn't change. So therefore, 2 times 5 is 10. See that? So that's where I got 10 over 5 from. Okay. And the reason I did that is so that these two guys would talk to each other and mix together and become an improper fraction. Okay. Should we do one more converting? And then I'm going to let you guys do the operations here. Pick one. We just did G. A, B, C, D, E. E. Yeah. I need more space. Sir? Yeah. Is the arrow on 5G pointing towards the 10? The arrow in 5G is pointing towards... Yeah, yeah, that's right. Actually, really, this line is just, the whole line is in between. Yeah. So, yeah. What did you tell me? E? Is that what you asked me for? Yeah. Five and five sixths. Okay. Okay. Can you see it? A bit tricky. Five and five sixths. All right. Now, what did I do here? Have a look at how I did it, right? I've got the five. Ready to go? I've got the 5 and I've got the 5 sixths, okay? So I want to turn this guy into a fraction over 6, right? So maybe I'll stick in that extra line, okay? I'll say that's 5 times 6 over 6. Mm. Wait, what? Okay, why'd I do that? The reason why is because it's going to give me a denominator of 6, which is what I want. Okay, so can you see I went from... Five, right. five times six is 30. And so you end up with 35 over six. Is that where you went? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Now, that's not the way, the only way to set it out, but I'm encouraging you to go this way because it makes it really clear where the numbers come from. Um, the logic is clear, okay? So if your way works and you're consistently getting the right answers, that's fine, okay? But if it's not, this is a way that you can set it out that'll help.